So welcome to week three's careers exercise. Um, you only have one exercise this week. And as I've mentioned in the all careers exercise channel, this tutorial session will actually form part of the assignment itself. So we won't only be speaking about how to do the tutorial how to do the exercise. We will also be interacting with you so that we can grade you. So everything that you, um, all the interactions between myself and Mariam will determine part of your grade for the exercise. So basically what we are going to do is after we have finished our presentation, which we usually do every week, we will then start asking you the questions which I've asked you to prepare and everyone has to interact or contribute um, so that we can grade you as I've said. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and start. So yeah, this week's exercise is called developing curiosity and the ability to ask good questions. Mariam, can you see my screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, so why asking questions is important. Just going to jump right in. Asking questions and being curious is going to be an important part of your life. It should already be an important part of your life. It is the way you learn and grow and in order to evolve in your career, in your personal life, wherever, asking questions will always be important. Um, so I've just got some information here, but most importantly, asking questions is very important because it determines what kind of leader you are. You are probably a good leader if you're asking questions um, from the people around you, from the people who are who work for you, the people you work for. Um, questions, asking questions is important for the scientific mind. So I think most of you have some kind of background in science. So you might be very familiar with the scientific method, which is about asking questions, posing a, a hypothesis and then um, doing an experiment to prove or disprove what you have um, posed. And then it encourages critical thinking. So it is important for you to develop your critical thinking skills beyond your work and professional life. You require critical thinking skills for everything that you do. Critical thinking skills is important for every decision you make. Asking questions broadens your mind. It fuels innovation. Innovation means new ways of thinking, new ways to live, new in inventions, um, development in science, technology, and asking questions encourages positive change. Um, a few tips on how to develop your cu curiosity. Um, read widely. Reading doesn't mean just in a book. You can read newspaper articles, magazines, blogs. Um, just reading as much as you possibly can so that you can expand your worldview and your knowledge. And the more knowledge you gain, the more curious you probably will be. Um, be willing to ask damn questions. So you've probably heard this a lot, but there is no such thing as a stupid question. And there really is no such thing as a stupid question. If you are asking a question that you think is stupid, then it probably means someone else has thought of that question as well. Um, curiosity is not a temporary state. Uh, well, you know, learning never ends. So being curious will never end if you are always ready to learn. Um, it's never going to go away. So do not think of it. Do not think of asking questions as just something for the year and now. It should exist throughout your life. Um, a good way to develop curiosity is exploring different interests. So 
arts, culture, sports, science and technology. And what goes hand in hand with that is connecting with new people. So you are very lucky to be in a program like this because you are connecting with people from all over Africa, different countries, speaking different different languages and eating different foods. So interact with one another with your fellow trainees so that you can become more curious and learn more about the way of life. And then finally, um, well, not finally, but asking the right questions. Um, you might ask, is there a right or wrong question? Um, I cannot give you an answer to that because until you have received an answer to your question, you will not know whether you have asked the right question. And um, there is no rule to asking the right questions. You just have to constantly ask questions. And then finally, how do you ask more questions? Um, make sure that your questions are open-ended so that you can get more details out of the responder. Do not make any assumptions. So don't assume that you already know the answer. Don't assume what someone's answer will be. If you have one question, a great way to ask more questions is to ask multiple people so that you can get various different answers. Make sure that you have follow up questions and always understand the difference between facts and speculation. Facts are true. We know that the that the sky is blue, the sun is bright and yellow. Those are facts. Um, speculations or theories without any firm evidence to prove or disprove. Okay. Mariam, over to you. All right, thank you so much. Hi everyone, and I hope we're having a lovely day. So pretty much, I'm going to be taking us through the exercise for this week career session. Um, so <clears throat> I'm sure by now everyone has access to the um, exercise Google Doc. So by now you already have um, the Google Doc explaining um, developing curiosity and the questions you're supposed to answer. So this is me just going through the exercise, explaining the solution to the exercise and what we expect from you generally. So for this week um, career exercise, we have three major questions and I'm going to be going through them bit by bit. So the first um, question is the sterile session, which is what we're having at the moment. And like Carrie said, at the end of um, our presentations, we expect you to have prepared questions like she has reminded you in the Slack channel. So your engagement from um, the session, from the sterile session is going to be a determining factor to the grade that you get from this um, exercise now the second question is using the question formulation technique you should provide at least 30 brainstormed questions list um top five questions from this 30 brain um, brainstormed questions and list improve um top five questions that is the question the top five questions from these 30 questions you should have improved them to be a better question We'll get to that in a bit. So what um, case study or what question prompts are you developing these questions from? This is it. You are the second employee to join a fintech startup, which offers credit scoring predictions for Uganda on the basis of mobile credit purchases. Your CEO developed a new algorithm as part of a PhD research and you will help her commercialize. Your CEO wants you to choose a cloud platform and wants you to either to use either AWS, GCP, or Azure. So the emphasis now starts from you are preparing for a 30 minute meeting where she wants you to make a recommendation. So the basis of this um, 
question prompt is she wants to have a meeting with you a 30 minute meeting specifically and she wants to listen to your recommendation for us to carry out this project for us to choose what particular cloud platform and to also um see if the new algorithm she has developed will help her commercialize this project our goal is to raise investment and exit in five years so she has put like a short-term goal and what she plans to do which is to raise investment so the old thing here is you're going to be in a meeting with her and she wants to listen to what you would recommend the things you prefer or just your advice on these things generally so before you go into the meeting you'll probably have some questions you want to ask her so see it's like someone that is coming to meet you for advice if someone comes to meet you for advice over something there are some things you probably want to tick some questions or approaches you want to tick before you now give the advice so this is what is happening here now for this meeting you want to make sure she has answered some of your questions before you give your recommendation so now brainstorm on these questions so now you're going to take your time and brainstorm at least 30 questions meaning minimum is 30 so it means you can brainstorm more than 30 it could be 40 it could be 50 depending on how the questions are coming so after you've brainstormed at least 30 you're going to go through these questions and pick your top five which is left to you depending on how or maybe there's an hierarchy of importance or anything just list your top five questions then these five questions that you've listed you're going to improve them to be more of like um, it, I don't I don't want to say serious, but you want to improve them to look better. So in case the questions are not properly structured or they don't feel like a full question, you're going to improve the question with more details. So now let's get into the QFT technique that will help you brainstorm 30 questions. Because if you think of it, 30 questions might be a lot. So let's get into the QFT method or technique. Sorry, before we get into that, the third question is write one to two paragraph of your reflection on questions that you wished you had asked in with um, in with one of the training. So, <clears throat> like Kai has explained, the essence of this whole exercise is to train you to be able to develop questions. And she has also said there are no right or wrong questions. Those depend on the answer you get to these questions. So by now, after carrying out number two, your brain or your um, your curiosity will have widened enough. So in your head, you start asking yourself, oh, I, I should have asked this question in week one. Oh, I should have asked this question in week two, that kind of thing. So the questions that are now like coming to you because it's a moment of reflection, those questions that are now coming to you that you wish you have asked previously, you can also like note them down. And you probably have the answers to them now or not, which is totally okay. Just note them because you're just reflecting. So back to the QFT method I'll assist you. There are four major rules. There are, four ma there are four major rules in developing questions or formulating your questions. So the first is ask as many questions as you can. In as much as there is um, a minimum here, which is 30, but there is no limit. There is no like stop at 100. You can go as far as 100, that's okay. But we're just saying that ask as many, but the rule still stands that you should ask as many questions as you can and the next um, rule is do not stop to discuss judge or answer the questions in the process of getting or formulating these questions don't start brooding on oh does this question make sense you're already going against the rule if you think of it that way so it would waste your time so you'll be able to develop more questions as possible so just don't waste time on it anyone that comes to your head just keep one two Keep going so don't think about it don't um worry if it makes sense or not just keep writing you can easily go back to it and make it an improved question from the exercise itself <clears throat> the third one is write down every question as it is stated so however it comes to you write it down it might not feel like a question yet but however, however it has come to you in your head just write it that way which brings to the last rule is change any statement into a um, question so because it might not come fully as a question yet it might just be a statement but you know you want to ask something related to that so after you've written that statement you can now rephrase or restructure it into a proper question that will probably be like what who we using those like parameters that kind of thing so don't worry if it doesn't make sense yet just take your time 
write as much questions as possible, minimum of 30. Do not discuss or judge or be like, oh, this doesn't make sense. You will come back to it for sure. Then write it as it is stated, then change any statements or query anything into a proper question later. So this is the rule you would use in providing at least 30 brainstorm questions. Then from your 30 brainstorm question, you would list out your top five, then you would improve this top five based on this story prompt. So additional information, this exercise is due on Friday, 8 p.m. UTC. Submission should be in PDF. Although there is really no penalty at the moment for people, uh, for people that are not submitting in the format that is being requested from, but we are suggesting or advising that if we request for a PDF, submit a PDF. If we request for um, a Google Doc, submit a Google Doc. The essence for um, asking for different um, formats is basically to make you familiar and comfortable with different formats. So by the time you get into your jobs, you would get familiar with these different formats. Also involve professional writing. By now you get this because we want to make sure your statements are grammatically correct, punctuation, spelling, and all that. Also, if you have more questions, please don't forget to reach out to us on our career exercise um, Slack channel. Also, take your time. Do not rush. Thank you for listening. So I think now we can take questions related to this. <clears throat> questions related to this exercise. Then we can now go ahead and have the engagement section that Carrie has planned. Thank you. Okay, Rafa, go ahead and we'll open the floor to questions about this exercise. Yeah, thank you, Mariam. Uh, it was nice. So just in, in the last slide, you had about uh, not judging the question and not uh, think of and discuss it and think about the answer. Isn't that really hard to do when you are Boston or asking some question. I mean, what exactly someone just do to skip this? Um, Mariam, do you have an? I, I think that you just, um, Rafa. I think the main point that Mariam tried to make is don't think about it too much. Um, the 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 um. The reason for this exercise is to help you to think more creatively and to help you open up your mind. So I would suggest not thinking about it too much, um, but maybe Mariam can give you a more concise answer. Mariam? Um, I don't know, but that's a good one, actually. So like she said, <clears throat> like she said, the essence of um, the essence of this um, tax itself is to develop curiosity. So based on that story prompt, now we want you to be able to think of possible questions that you can ask your CEO based on um, what you end up recommending for her. But now we're not just saying ask. We're not saying normally if you're going to ask um, a question, maybe if you're going to ask your boss or supervisor a question, you're not going to think about it. But now, in order for you to be able to develop good questions, you need to be able to develop so many questions without worrying about it, if that makes sense. So now, for the exercise, you're supposed to develop so many questions. So if you start thinking of it, if you start thinking of the one you already have like written down, it will probably like slow down the process of you providing more questions. So that's why it's just like um, people that write books or something, they don't like exactly read as they're writing, they just keep typing. Then when they're done, maybe the paragraph or the page, they go back and say, oh, what I've said here doesn't make sense. So that's how it should work. Just develop the questions, then later you go back to it and see if it makes sense or not. Has that answered the question? Yeah, thank you. That addresses the question. Okay. Um, if no one else has any questions about this, exercise we are going to get into the engagement part of this um i understand that it's not always comfortable okay sorry i understand it's not always comfortable to 
um, speak during these um, sessions, but for this part, you will be graded for this. So I really hope that everyone will participate. Um, first, Diria, go ahead um, before we get started with that. Uh, thanks, Gary. Uh, I have a question on the presentation about the presentation. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, I understand it that in education environment or education setting, yeah, it's better to ask, and uh, it is even expected to ask questions, like to understand more about the topic or something that is being discussed. Uh, but um, um, I wonder if, like in the work environment, whether it's it's uh, it is really a good thing to like ask many questions, uh, since maybe like how I think that could uh, act as like showing that you don't have enough skills maybe about the task that you're going to do, because like uh, the way I understand it. Like everyone is responsible for their tasks, task, tasks or like the team tasks. So like to ask many questions or to ask uh, questions in the the work environment, uh, is it a good thing? Because I, I I believe it's different from the education environment. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Yeah, I totally understand where you're coming from with that. Um. Firstly what we are teaching in this exercise is not just for your professional life so it's not just going to apply to whichever job you end up in after this it is supposed to span many different areas of your life i think that in a job environment where you are working on projects that you are responsible for it is important that you understand whatever project you are responsible for, what the guidelines and the criteria is. So I don't think that you will be penalized by your employer for asking questions to make sure that you do not do anything wrong with the project or whatever it is you're responsible for. However, this exercise is supposed to help you beyond just your whatever job that you get after this. So it will help you to learn more, to have a more open mind, to possibly one day start your own enterprise, your own business, whatever it is that you would like to do. Um, it's not just limited to your professional life. And I agree that it might seem that if you don't, if you ask a lot of questions, it might seem that you are not up to the standards which your employer expects. I think that also what we need to learn is how to ask questions or how in which manner to ask questions so that we don't make people think that we don't know what we are doing. But this is not just limited to your professional um, life. And I will have to think about this some more and then get back to you all on Slack because I think that was a very good question. Um, Mariam, do you have anything to add? No. Okay. Uh, Mariam, do you have a list? Okay, cool. I'm glad you get it. Um, do you have the list of everyone? Yes, I do. Okay, so we're going to get into the engagement section. Everyone should ask a question um, because we're going to note this. So we'll start with Abel. Please interact with us so that we can grade you. Abel? Okay, Kerry. Sorry. Hi. Can you give okay. me five minutes? Okay, Just, I'll um, come back to I'm you organizing. Then. Okay. I'm organizing the questions. Okay. okay, I'll come back to you. Abba Salam, if you're here, please um, ask us the question that you've prepared. Okay, Kerry. Hi. Uh, hi. I was 
I was about to request about the, uh, the coming uh, questions or the coming projects. Are they going to be the combination of the uh, the projects that we done or the skills that we collected from zero to two, or are we going to have uh, an additional skill set, or are we going to need an additional skill set about the uh, the the projects that we do, that we're going to do? Okay, so for the careers exercise. Um, everything from week zero to week two were independent exercises, but we will be building on some of the skills that you have learned throughout week zero to week two. So we are currently creating the content for the next few weeks careers exercises. So those were independent. We won't be replicating the same exercises going forward, but we will be building on some of the skills. I know a lot of people want to know or want to learn time management skills and communication, so we will be building on those. Does that answer your question? Okay, maybe he cannot hear me. Um, Abel, are you ready now? One minute, one minute. Um, Abu Bakr, are you here and are you ready to ask us your question? Okay, I'm not sure if you can hear me, so I'm moving on. Amon, yeah, um, hello, good morning. Oh, sorry, yes, can you ask us your question, please? Hello. Hi. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So. Um. Thank you very much. So earlier on, from week zero to week one, and of you, know, you shared with us um a slide of how the training is, the and the time frame of the training. So my main my question is that um, what exactly is the main aim of structuring this training? Whereas um, you allocated um six weeks um for machine learning and four weeks for data engineering and two weeks for web three. So why the allocation? What exactly is the aim of doing that um, time allocation for the different field areas? Okay, so I cannot, or Mariam and I can't speak to that because we were not responsible for structuring the program like that. We are only responsible for the careers exercises and we, what we wanted was for everyone to prepare a question about the week zero to week two careers exercises. So if you have a question about the careers exercises, that's great, but I cannot speak about how it was structured unless someone from 10 Academy is here who can explain that to us. But I don't think there is anyone here who can explain that. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, Amon, can you please ask us your question? Okay, Bazan has said something in the. Um, so you're asking. Okay, is this about the careers exercises, or is the are these some things that you are doing for your technical work? Just type it in the chat, please. Go ahead, Abel. Hello, Kerry. 
Sorry for Hi. the delay. Um, I have a question about the three real world job exercise on the three real world job exercise. Okay. Uh, I supplied the genuine URL for the for the genuine URL uh, LinkedIn URL for the managers and employees that works there. But in the meantime, I received a comment uh, for the for, uh, for the link of the actual job. But I find it on the LinkedIn on there on the company's LinkedIn page. And uh, is is the LinkedIn page work uh, requirement enough for the job link? Uh, I was curious about that. So you found the the job through LinkedIn. Yeah, I found the job through LinkedIn. And you're asking if the link was good enough for the assignment. For the assignment, yes. But I get I got a comment from Aaron. Uh, there is no link for the real world, real uh, jobs, but I found them on the link on their LinkedIn page, on their main company LinkedIn page. I think that um, we we came across this a lot where people provided links and mm -hmm. they we searched we followed the links and it ended up being. Um, removed or so I think in those cases the employer or the companies removed the jobs or the, the closing date had passed and therefore the links were no longer valid so it could be one of those circumstances um, I think Mariam is going to take over from me for a little bit so um, over to you mariam um i hope that um answered your question abel okay okay thank you all right thank you so much carrie michael it's on guard your question okay yeah first of all sorry about my my, my mic may not be there may be some disturbance sorry and i was like can i ask the questions now Maybe I'm afraid that I may have a power outage. That's why I need to make it as fast as possible, if that's okay. Okay, go ahead. Okay, yeah. I was uh, on the peer mentoring and also on the three, on the business idea part that we have on the career summit. I was having some curiosity, like uh, on the peer mentoring, I got, I got good uh, connection with my friend. And like, I was thinking, is there any uh, further tasks about like this? If there's any roadmap that you can tell us how we can achieve on this, on the, on our weekly tasks? That was my, my first question. What are the best roadmaps you advise us for our weekly tasks? That's my first question related to the peer mentoring and also our uh, future success. And the second one that I have was, uh, I suppose that you already asked us on, on the previous career assignment about the, the business idea. And I was curious about, is there any related tasks that we should do after that? And is there any, uh, is there any good advice that you can give us in order to achieve our business ideas? Those are my two questions. Thank you. Thank you. So for the second um, question, you're asking like the develop essay presentation you made in week zero, if we have any advice in implementing that idea. Um, the answer will be yes and no. Um, yes will be in the sense that when you're done with your program, because um, the entire training is not really about entrepreneurship at the end of the day, the training is pretty much making sure you equip the data science knowledge and then you're ready for global level jobs. So we're not really like, trying to produce entrepreneurs yet, if that makes sense. It's not in the works of 10 Academy yet to pro like to produce entrepreneurs. So that would be yes. And then no. So we can't really say on the long run. So in terms of implementing the idea, I think that should just be no. We don't have anything in the works to help you um, develop your ideas yet. And the first question is something about roadmap. You said um, if we have anything in the works to like 
um, encourage more peer mentoring exercise? Please let me know if I'm correct with the question. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Okay, so the thing is, we're working on other exercises that will like involve like group, group participation, if that makes sense. So it seems you enjoy the peer mentoring exercise, like you have said. So we're pretty much working on things like that to like enable like um, more participation within the trainees. Have I answered your question? Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you. You're so I think the next person, um, Tades, please go ahead with your question. Hello, Mariam. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, fine. Uh, what I need to ask is uh, just uh, actually uh, the thing that you share is good. Uh, this is my first experience that uh, uh, the people are caught in this manner uh, to be <clears throat> to have a full fledged knowledge of the organization trends. I appreciate that one. And uh, uh, what I have as a question is one, uh, is it the, this non-technical uh, exercise is part of our uh, grade, I mean, is it evaluatable? Uh, maybe some of them are evaluated and some of them are not evaluated. Uh, and the second one is, is there a case uh, that we can share uh, the working environment of those uh, data engineers or web three developers and so on things if you have uh, i think ten academy has many agents uh, so from those agents what discipline it need for example in that manner if you propose something for us I'm happy and even on yesterday's stand up I have talked something. Uh, is there is there uh, is there a chance to get into uh, peer in each week? That means by reshuffling those people together. For example, if I be uh, if I will be with X in this uh, in this week, uh, I will be with Y in the next week and uh, we will help each other just then finally uh, we may share uh, we may have the same stand if uh, uh, the aim is just to graduate all those stuff so even sharing from the training also uh, important so this is my question thank you okay um Thales, i didn't really get a second question but the first question if I'm correct, you're saying um we've not like evaluated all your non-technical exercises. Is that what you said? Like, are you saying like is, you've not gotten the grades for them? Is that what you're saying? Is a grade is going to be part of the leadership leaderboard? I mean, uh, just some, for example, from my side, some of them are evaluated, and some of them are not evaluated from week one. I don't know whether. Uh, Okay, okay, okay. For, I guess for getting to uh, yeah, yeah that's okay. It. The thing is, we have actually graded um all of the past week um non technical exercise, but you're currently on that QC that's like quality control just to check for things probably. So, um, Arun will be in the best position to answer if they are incorporated in your leaderboard score, but I don't think you should worry about it that much because we actually like evaluated them like good at them so you shouldn't worry about that then for the second question i wasn't really clear okay it, it, is it is it not clear yeah can you just take it in one line i wasn't really oh, okay clear. Yeah. Uh, i can i can just okay. what i'm saying is you have uh, some agents here yeah, that you will work with Okay, are you asking if we have agents? Uh, no, just I'm saying uh, you will going to <clears throat> you will going to communicate us with some of the uh, okay in terms of finding who, jobs. Is that what you're saying? 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. But no, what I need is what I need is is now. Is there a possibility to uh, to to shape us in a way that that organization act maybe in the real in the real they may act in some manner yeah that uh, maybe they will uh, uh, work in some manner the, the attitudes even the uh, the things especially the things that need the performance levels that needed to be higher uh, in that company uh, on data engineering and so on things so a, a kind of coaching i mean if you have some people from there if they early tell us things that we will uh, that we should uh, do it is better to shape ourselves okay okay i think i got what saying now so you said just like the guests talk that like um involved with like people that left that finished from um that graduated from 10 academy you're saying can we get people from these global jobs to come and talk to you on performance is that what you're saying yes yes oh, okay 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 thank you that is a great suggestion so we're going to tailor it to um the careers team in general thank you for that that is it i've answered your question yes of course all right thank you so much sorry it took a while to get so i think the next person is mark mark please go ahead okay hey Miriam. can you hear me Hi. yes i can so my question uh, is uh, regarding uh, tools for remote work mm -hmm. so when i saw the career exercise uh, i thought uh, we were going to uh, you, you guys were going to include uh, time tracking tools uh, because time tracking tools are very critical uh, in remote work so my question or it can be a suggestion so are we going to have uh, a time tracking tool uh, career exercise which can help us to get ourselves familiar with uh, time tracking in uh, remote jobs okay that's a good one by time tracking you also mean time management right uh, not really but usually remote works uh, they are paid uh, so in time so uh, the rates are uh, like uh, this much uh, dollar per hour so the employers usually track uh, track those times uh, to check if the employee is uh, oh, oh. Uh, working the required hours oh that makes sense so i think i would take that as a suggestion instead so we would work on an exercise that would allow you to be familiar with some time tracking um tools so when you get to these global level jobs you'll be able to use these tools to track the amount of time you've worked for you to be charged right yes yes all right we would work on that thank you for your suggestion any other question i believe dynamos marco said his hand up i think kelvin sorry kelvin raised his answer oh okay go ahead can you hear me? yes i can hear you hello can you hear me yes yes yeah so my question is in regard of remote job task we did in week one so i wanted to know uh, like if you apply for job and uh, it, it takes a long time to to receive the answer like i want to, to know if you should intervene and ask for the ask for the how it is or have to wait um okay i think i can take this one that's never an easy um thing to decide i have done that before when i've applied to jobs i always opt about three or four weeks if i have not received a reply to an application i will send a follow-up email but i think that in the kind of jobs that you will be applying for i was not applying for those kinds of jobs so i don't think it applies i think if you were a very strong candidate for the position if you matched all the skills and experience that they wanted if you have everything that they want then i would suggest sending a follow-up email but 
I don't think it is something that is recommended generally. Um, so I don't think there's a good answer to that question. Mariam, do you have some input on that? I think generally, um, in Africa, I think that's a problem. Oh, let me speak for Nigeria. And in Nigeria, that's a problem. Like, you would like apply for a job generally and it will take like 100 years before they'll get back to you. But the truth is, nowadays I've seen where like this job vacancy put out like timeline saying, oh, um, our recruiting phase is two months, blah, 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 that kind of thing. So I would actually advise if you don't um, get anything within that timeline that has been stated, there is nothing wrong actually to reach out um, and ask for the um, state of your application. The worst you probably get is no response and obviously no response already means no, that kind of thing. But there is nothing wrong in asking the state of your application, which is totally fine. Because I think in this world, I've even had like cases where people be like, um, they are the one they wanted to send the offer to, but they mistakenly sent it to someone else. So imagine that person they asked in the first instance. Like this thing gets like as much as everything is computerized and stuff there's this human, human touch and like things get lost in the track or stuff so there's nothing wrong in reaching out if that makes sense yeah yeah it does okay um who has the hand is okay Maiden, you are up okay thank you mary uh so my question is i think i just tried to ask it so are the career assignments included in the leaderboards, the gradings? That's my first question. And the second one is regarding the remote, uh, the three remote drops assignment you gave us on week one. I found it a bit hard to find jobs that I fit in with my current set of skills and the skills that I personally predict I would acquire at Tena, after Athena Academy. So what I want to know is what specific skills would we acquire at the end of Ten Academy? And like, what are the jobs that we will be able to take on or apply to? It would be nice to hear that from you guys. Thank you. Okay, so for us, um, for we are the um, non-technical team, we are the careers team, so I cannot exactly give you an exact answer but the goal is always to get you into global level high impact junior position jobs so that would be entry level positions at companies preferably you know international so that you can work remotely um and there are three tracks um which unfortunately we cannot offer individually um as i think some people have requested so you would have to go through training for all three tracks um which is machine learning web3 and data engineering i believe so for the next um i think there's about 10 weeks maybe left for training so for those 10 weeks you will be building on the skills in those three areas which would then prepare you however i will say that everyone on the 10 academy team who are your tutors who are preparing the material for you are very good at their jobs they've been in the same position that you have been in you have seen by now that you are receiving excellent training so you should be i think you should be comfortable realizing that you are being well prepared um and i think that we are tracking the careers exercises separately from the leaderboard where your technical work is being tracked for your first question um i think thank you for answering them okay samuel you are up okay hello Claire. and uh, my question will be about the uh, remote uh, work job uh, the i have i wonder like 
is a, a remote worker and uh, a official worker at the head office is valid is valued the same and uh, when we mean by remote uh, is like everything the, from the hiring process to the full end is remote or there's a hybrid thing on it that's my question um that is an excellent question yes at e uh, people who are working remotely who are not in hq the headquarters or the country where the headquarters are based you should be valued as much as the headquarters people location are however um for the most part a lot of big companies have offices in other countries um, and they require help from all over the world to run those companies. So you are valued as much, definitely you are valued as much as even if you're not in the, the country or close to the location where the head office is. Can you please repeat your second question? Samuel? Yeah, like uh, if there, if I'm like, is the hiring process full remote? Like, if there's yes. a contact in, in real, uh, I guess you get my question. Okay. Um, for the most part, hiring processes are completely remote, especially if you are in, we are in Africa. So if we're applying to, um, jobs where the um, employer is in the States or in the UK or in Europe, there will be no in-person contact unless you decide to move to those countries. Um, but for the most part, the hiring process is completely remote and it's much easier to hire people from other countries now because of zoom and google meet as we've been using for some time i hope that answers your question and still after after uh, what about after the hiring process if you're hired if, in, selected. if you're selected and the job description said remote then you will be working remotely maybe you will be given an opportunity to travel but you we are you will be working remotely. Yeah, that's the answer my question. Okay, great. Uh, Stella, please go ahead. Okay, I hope that you can hear me. Yeah. Okay, my first question uh, is regarding the the writing of the CV. Um, the directions were to write a one page CV. But um, we find that as engineers, we're supposed to also advertise the projects and other other things that we have done in the industry. Um, so how are we going to compress that to one page? Or is it like it was just for that task? Or um, were you advising us to ensure that our CVs are always one page? Then um, I'd also like to request that um, after the comments that you made regarding the, the, the jobs, the global jobs exercise, kindly let us know exactly why the jobs that maybe we picked were not suitable and maybe how we can go about uh, the job search um, wisely. Okay. Um, so for the most part, it is important for you to keep your CV as short and as easy to read as possible. All the careers exercises, everything that we will be doing, Mariam and I, all of those are going to apply to your real, um, your jobs in real life. So always keep your CV short, two pages for the most and preferably one page. A way to keep this short is to not use as many details. Um, so you don't need to add 
all your skills, all your experience, which is why it's important for you to read the job descriptions clearly and to tailor each CV to each job application. And then as for the second question, we were very clear on what we required for that task, which was an entry level position, data engineering for remote work where you don't need a US visa or to be in that country. Um, and I think a lot of people got jobs or selected jobs that were senior positions or required for them to be in the US or to, to have US visas. So that was the problem. Um, and I know that everyone has said that it was difficult to find jobs with those specifications. So usually um, once you graduate, you might be more, um, you might not be as limited because you could then apply for machine learning or Web3 jobs and not just data engineering. So does that help? Yes. Okay. Uh, Milaku, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So uh, my question is on the three remote jobs. So I was exploring on LinkedIn and indeed uh, about uh, junior data, data engineering roles. So almost most of them that I have uh, so, uh, so are require one at least one year experience. So how, how are we going to fill that the gap between the, that? Does, does uh, training or the project are considered as an experience? That's my question. The training that you receive here should, will most likely be considered experience. It won't only be considered as education. So it will be considered experience um, and you should be able to be, you should be um, accepted for the entry level position of one year requirement. Okay, thank you. Uh, Salam, please go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, my my question is um, the first uh, the first question I have is uh, uh, when I see the career exercise from week zero up to week two, it was all a reflection of uh, the real world um, the non technical requirements that we should have, and I was wondering. Uh, uh, oh, I want to ask uh, your observation on uh, on the past batch, batches, if um, the trainees did well on the career exercises that were given, were, there, were they more prone to having a job and also were, were they successful on the team they joined? Uh, what, what kind of impact uh, does um, this exercise bring from your observation? And that's my first question. And uh, the second question I have is, uh, with every work uh, we are supposed to juggle, uh, not only the career exercises, but also the technical exercises, um, how can we submit, uh, how can we take our time and submit a, a, a good um, uh, submission uh, you know because uh, if we are going to submit on the deadlines we might not uh, complete all the tasks and this and that could happen so what's your advice on uh, to manage all these things thank you so for your first question we've had a lot of successful graduates from previous batches although i am I've only been involved with batch five, which is your batch and Mariam as well. However, uh, all the exercises that we have given you thus far, you have, um, they've been from previous batches, which we have built on to improve for batch five. And I think that you had a guest speaker who was very successful um, 
and there will be more guest speakers who will tell you about the benefits or how well they did after 10 academy and as for your assignment submissions firstly working with the other people with the other trainees in 10 academy is important those they will help you to submit much quicker reaching out to the careers team mariam and i have instituted the office hours which you can use if you need help and also making a plan at the beginning of the week and planning out all your exercises and starting your exercises as soon as you get them does that answer your question yeah thank you okay ken wakura please go ahead okay i have two questions my first question will there be a session to or an exercise to build on peer mentoring exercise and my second question is will there be a session about time management and maybe an exercise for that because the the training is time demanding and we need to know how to manage our time will there be an exercise for that thank you um so there will be more group sessions regarding your first question and secondly yes currently working on the time management exercise to help you to learn how to prioritize and manage your time does that answer your question yes it does thank you okay this way you are up yeah hello okay can you hear me yeah i Gary? can hear you yeah okay uh, my question is on the week one uh, real world jobs uh, assignments so uh, on the assignment you have uh, collected all of our uh, maybe expectations of the job we could have after this training so uh, what I'm saying is, uh, what, how much, how do you compare the real jobs out there that are available that we can join by the current skills that we have uh, upon July? I mean, so how do you compare our uh, ideas and uh, the real world jobs that are available right now, and how close can we become to those uh, jobs that we want? Thank you. So. I've said, um, I think, just to summon a few moments ago, that your training year will be, it won't just be seen as education, this will be seen as experience that you're getting. It's an intensive three months of training. So I think that once you graduate and you're applying for jobs, it's up to you to fill the gaps and i think that you should have learned how to do that in the good gap analysis that you had to do previously okay but uh, can you compare our expectations uh, and uh, the, maybe if you know the last batch uh, access to those jobs i don't have access to those jobs and i think that we would have to refer you to arun about that okay thanks all right margaret you can over to you you can ask your question um hi everyone hi. so my question is um about cv writing so um, I read something about um, robo recruiters. So um, are we supposed to tailor our CV to like almost match um, the job description like in Word so as to, um, my, my real question is, is that what actually happens um, during hiring? 
Okay, that's a good one too, because obviously, like you said, I've heard something where they say they just like put um these CVs into like some sort of software to select some keyword. Then that way, you know, if you like make it to the next round. I think from our training, um, for the CVs, in as much as um it would involve a robot or some sort, I feel like it will still remain the same standards that are required, which is like the formats that we've um put in place for you guys, like for the CV exercise. Even if a robot is going to be checking it, it will still not be more than the standards that they've required, which is like um a short bio um short explanation of your experiences explain like the technical things that you are um involved with so i think you should not let that really bother you because as long as the C your cv is already designed enough to be simplified for the job role whatever a human being can read and see if that makes sense it would not really differ if a robot should take a look at it as long as you've still like maintained the standard instructions if that makes sense yeah it does make sense uh thank you so yeah. i also have a second question um okay. your cv needs to have both soft skills and your technical skills so how do you identify your soft skills how do you test yourself and see that these are the kind of soft skills that i have well that's a good one actually from what some of us know soft skills are like skills that you can qualify not quantify if that makes sense so soft skills are like organization um teamwork leadership you can qualify them you cannot like exactly measure them so i think nowadays there are actually websites where you can just like um it's almost like a smart analysis kind of thing where you just like put in things then it would be able to like um give you a result where you just say like these are your major soft skill another thing you can do to be able to identify these things is to ask your friend as much as they might be bad or ask like people that you worked with in your past you can tell them things like how can you define me in five words so from there you put these things together and then if these people are saying the same thing you should be able to tell that or this is your major soft skill another thing you can do is probably google all the possible soft skill and pick the one you think because as much as people would want to define you you also know your capabilities to an extent so you can easily just tick off the things you think you possess like you have and then narrow it down to like major three to five and then for the technical skills those are those are the ones you can quantify so that one nobody will need nobody needs to tell you that oh you're good in uh, coding i don't really know like the technical skills per se but we're just saying like no one will really tell you oh you're good at statistics or no one will really tell that you're good at coding you know these things by yourself you don't need to lie to yourself so i think the tricky part is really the soft skill which i agree with you so they are like sites i'm going to try and work on those and like send them to you on the channel and then you can just get people to tell you from even like your recommendation letters what are those things that people have said about you and you can qualify them so those are your soft skills pretty much okay thank you uh last question okay um so we did an exercise on peer mentoring and basically that's um for peers but there's also the traditional mentors who are uh who have much more experience than you in the field you're interested in mm -hmm. um my question is where do you find a mentor and how do you approach them um yeah i think we know where to find them it's just how do we approach them i don't know if that makes sense we kind of know like these people that we want to be our mentors like the traditional mentors but the um tricky part is how do we approach them i think not to waste so much time we would like design a session i think because everybody will gain from that so i think we should do that if that makes sense yeah thank you i teach you how to like approach and like deal with like traditional mentors thank you for your question margaret eden please go ahead okay um hello everyone um i have two questions my first one would be we have seen our week one results and i'm curious about how it is calculated is it in 
percentile or fixed mark basis and my another question is about the real world jobs uh, what exactly is the difference between data engineer and machine learning engineer um, because we've been told that week one focused on data engineer and the second week focused on machine learning but it seems like our tasks on both weeks were similar so can you elaborate for me the exact differences between those two thank you okay i suggest or is it advice you reach out to your technical tutors on the major difference between data engineering and machine learning engineering. I really do not know anything. I will say rubbish if you ask me. And then for the first question is, how are we grading you? Yeah, it is percent, which is over 100. And then we have, if you go through your instruction, there's a rubric saying like, oh, professional writing, 10%. If you do this, 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 15%. So that is basically um, the parameters we use in grading. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, so it uh, it's not going to be compared to another student's performance, rather. I'm no, going to be more... why would they want to compare you to other students? Okay. I don't know. Maybe I'm, not, maybe I'm not getting it right, but like, as long as you're following that parameter, it's just saying, oh, she has a title, one mark. She... They are spelling, uh, the spellings are correct. There are no errors. So we just follow the rubric and then we, we grade with that. There is no comparison. Or maybe you're saying based on like the exemplar list we always drop. I get what you mean. Thank you. That's answered. Right. Okay, please. Okay. Um, let's prepare just one question because we are out of time. So just one question. Fit. Thank you for your question, Eden. Hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, my question uh, is uh, regarding um, tools for remote work. Um, so I doing uh, that task, I asked myself why, um, uh, like, are there criteria that you based on uh, choosing those tools, like uh, Slack, Notion? Um, I asked this because um, uh, communication means uh, change from uh, company to company. Um, so uh, are we going to, you, to learn about the other um, uh, tools or only those? Yeah. That's a good one, actually. I think someone someone already asked here, yeah, saying, I think it was Yididia that was asking if you go to like these jobs and then you meet, um, you are introduced to other tools compared to like Slack and Ocean. So the thing is, I think from um, from people experiences generally, this these are the common ones, let's put it that way. So people use Zoom. I think Zoom is even more common than, I'm not sure, let me not say what I don't know. But I think we just wanted you to be familiar with the common ones and if you would agree with me most of this software the moment you get into them you realize that the interface are really the same they might just have like little tweaks here and they're just like whatsapp and instagram sorry whatsapp and telegram rather so whatsapp it's a chatting based um software telegram is also a chat based software so there's really not much difference so even if you're introduced to another software all you need to do is just watch tutorials on youtube or check out the demo and stuff like that. So I don't think there will be like so much. If you can deal with Slack, you can deal with any other thing out today. Have that answered your question? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, thanks. All right. Um, I think the next person here is Birut. Please go ahead. Sorry, Birut. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Um. My question is, uh, uh, is it okay to ask something more after passing all the assessment for the job? I mean, uh, is it okay what, to... are, what are the important quest questions to ask before accepting some kind of job offer? Okay, what are, oh, that's a good one. What questions are you supposed to ask after you get an offer? I think the mostly things that are not mentioned in the, um, what's it called? Um, in the offer statement or offer letter rather so they probably didn't mention um your work hours you need to know your work hours so nobody is um if there are no work hours you'll just be disrespected eventually that kind of thing so you need to ask for work hours obviously your pay um i feel like you would know these things by the time it would 
this is like the determinant, the major determinant to probably be your offer letter. And I think you can easily focus on that during the job search phase. So by the time we're um, going through this job search phase, we will know the important things that you need to know and then it will make more sense there. So I don't think you should overthink it now till when it comes. So by the time you go through the requirements when you apply for this job, it will make more sense what you need to know and what you need to ask eventually. Okay, Does that make thanks. sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Kari is going to take over now and that will be Femi. Femi, ask your question. Yeah, go ahead. All right, um, my question uh, has been asked by a student, but then uh, I just have a question. You, you were saying something then, then I just want to point uh, it out concerning CV creation uh, for the tasks that we're given to create a CV or to write a CV. And someone asked the question that um, uh, you, you were saying two pages or three pages should uh, is like kind of too much that you should just limit it to one page. I was saying um, uh, we can um, suit our CV to what the company offers. So are, are you saying that we we, are, we can have more than uh, a CV, more than one CV, so we can have limited numbers of CV depending on what type of job or what type of job descriptions it's fitting so that um we once we check the job description it can go ahead to go back and edit the cv that suits the job description and then submit is that what you mean by that yes that's exactly what you what i mean tailor your cv exactly to the job that you're applying for and then you don't need to because then your CV won't be longer than two pages and hopefully will only be one page. All right, thank you then. Okay. I'm sorry, I uh, think just to add to that, Femi, I think you also need to um remember that you're applying for entry level jobs like no to have so much experience. I don't know if that makes sense. I understand that some of us like to volunteer here or there, do a little bit of community service, but if you're applying for a data engineering job. No one needs that information. So you know, just need to tailor it to what they want. So it's like the recruiter is just looking for certain things on, you know, like that five seconds glance, like, oh, what does he really have? Let's look at that. So if that makes sense, you shouldn't just bombard with so much information. All right. Thank you so much. Um, David Rose, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh... My question is, uh, are there any plans for um, uh, exercises on communication for people working remotely? Uh, I ask this because uh, people working remotely don't have that face-to-face -face contact. And if there's any good practice that we should follow to have good interaction with our colleagues. So we are currently, okay. We are currently working on a communications exercise for future weeks. So we are working on time management exercises or a time management exercise and then a communications exercise. Okay, thank you. Um, Abu Bakr, uh, Biruk, sorry, your hand is still up. Do you have another question? Yes. Um, okay, Abu Bakr, go ahead. Yeah. Um, I can't hear you. Okay, I'm going to move on to Matilda. Please ask your question.
we're gonna have to wrap up now because their next session is in 10 minutes hello can you hear me yeah yeah um do you hear the question that i just asked or should i repeat no it? okay please repeat it okay my question that i have is that um for the non-technical exercise for the three-year world jobs exercise um the exercise the tax was geared towards um we should consider data engineering jobs which that's most of us did what if um someone want to um because you have someone to um search in um for other jobs relating to another field like web three for example so is it possible that um we we'll consider this job search for the for another time or is this the yes. fixed Similarly. No, you can apply for whichever job that you want to once you're finished with the training. We only used data engineering for that exercise. So if you want to go into Web3 after training, then you are welcome to apply for Web3 jobs. Okay. So um, is it should I um, do the exercise again in relating to the Web3? Or should I just leave it as it is? You should just leave it as it is. It was just to teach you how to apply to jobs. Okay. Okay. Uh, Matilda, adding references in your CV, it's not mandatory, but it is recommended so that your employee, your possible employer, yeah, it's not mandatory, but you, it's recommended. Titus, please go ahead. We've got five minutes left. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, everybody. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. So my question goes on the, about the job search. Um, so uh, the whole of the 12 weeks that will be around, uh, there will be non-technical activities. So um, in the in the job search phase, I think most you you would have covered a lot in the non-technical aspect. So, uh, would the team still be with us, uh, actively helping us with the application and stuff? Yeah, so basically that's my main question. So, yeah, so everything that we do will be to help you to apply. Um, once the, the 12 weeks are over, you will be able to apply on your own. So, you'll be fine. Titus, did you did I answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You did. Okay. And then Amal, go ahead so that we can wrap up. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Um. So my question is, uh, how do we structure our LinkedIn profiles so that uh, uh, we are highly competitive? I mean, we we land into a job through LinkedIn. Do we include our projects or how do we describe our job roles in case we have had any experience before? So I would say for LinkedIn, you should add everything, all your experience and all your projects. And then when you do your CV, make your CV tailored to the job that you're applying for. So do not add every single thing that you have done, but then add your LinkedIn profile to your CV and then the employer can follow up and see that you have a wide ex um, wide range of experience um, so therefore your CV will stay short but your employer will still see all the experience that you have okay and uh, do we include our github or we wait until they ask for it include it um, do not wait for them to ask for it oh, okay okay so we ran over time a bit you've got another session in five minutes and i think most of everyone asked questions and remit i think you should probably also ask the technical tutors but 90 percent did receive did land jobs afterwards um so yes your interaction and engagement will be graded as well so enjoy your next session and thank you guys for coming bye and all the best